Good morning, everybody. And as you've seen, that test drive didn't go as expected. Um, so this video, we're going to go over a little more of the data that I went, went through for making the call for the ECM. I'll first kind of go over a lot of people think that the, the injector is shutting off due to a misfire. In a lot of cases, yes, that is correct. In this case, um, I do have um, some data showing that that is not the case. As you see here in GDS, which is GM's factory scan tool, we can get data PIDs for the uh, injector circuit test that it, that it does. Um, under normal situations, this this test is only going to be either okay or not ran. Um, and as you'll see here, we are getting that PID to drop all the way down to the the test result of low uh, control low voltage and. Our misfire disable PID stays at nothing. So the disable is not from the misfire. The disable is from the fault that it is perceiving. Um, so when I seen that, but with my circuit testing, I didn't see a circuit fault um, and this is when I kind of thought this out in my head of what was going on what was what's the ECM doing how is it coming up with this high control circuit low voltage okay so here's what my thought process was that I thought was going on in the ECM. You basically have a processor chip and this processor chip delegates jobs to other IC chips. Okay. And this IC chip can in some cases directly control the injectors but and coils and whatnot, but sometimes it's too much of a load for it. So it then delegates it to other specific drivers, which I was expecting it to have one for the low side and the boost side. And then you would also have an, actually a third one for the uh, 12 volt uh, pulse width. Okay, so what I was thinking I was having was a breakdown in this control circuit to the IC chip, not necessarily the output drivers. Um, and what would cause this is, you know, heat build up in the ECM, uh, vibrations, maybe the, at certain engine RPMs, we would get a resonant vibration that caused a solder joint on this thing to basically vibrate and lose connection. And the CPU monitors these outputs, okay? So it doesn't, it doesn't self-check this circuit. It only checks the outputs here. So if we had a breakdown here and this IC didn't command the boost, well then the ECM is going to, or the uh, processor is going to see here that we had no voltage increase. That would be our low voltage issue um so hopefully drawing this out kind of explains what i thought was wrong with the ecm okay so after explaining what i, I thought happened to the ecm let's get back to what, how i come to this conclusion i had hours of testing in this vehicle it doesn't come across that, like that in video because I have to shorten them down a whole lot, but I had hours and numerous test drives 
um, just re-verifying the fault, trying to get the pattern of failure, like when is this happening, what's going on, when it happens, just trying to think up, you know, how repetitive is this, um, and it's very repetitive. Every time you full throttled this truck, this this fault would occur. So a lot of a lot of you guys, you don't have the luxury that I have of being able to invest so much time in things. And even with the the circuit flow chart or the diagnostic flow chart for this this process, it is very very basic. It is unplug the ECM, do checks from the the injector pins to ground. Do you have any resistance? It should be OL or open loop. It shouldn't be shorted to ground at all. So you check those, those show up good. You ohm the injector, the injector ohms out exactly the same as every injector on the vehicle, all eight of them. So the next thing in, in that trouble tree is replace the ECM. If you find no circuit faults, which it also wants you to check for uh, key on ignition feeding into that circuit as well, which we didn't have. So you would, you would think the logic for the computer is, okay, are we seeing these voltages in these ranges that we're expecting them to be? And if not, these are the results of these tests. And in my case, the results of the test is the high control circuit is low voltage. So that is kind of how we, we come to the conclusion of the ECM being bad because clearly in our scope captures, we never lost our voltage at all. It never dropped out. It never done anything except for when we had those events and those events i now know is a strategy to save the ecm it is basically seeing a fault turn the injector off refire the injector to see if the fault is still present and it it kind of does this check a few times um i did not originally notice that pattern um and there's a, a couple other things that we're going to get into in the video here so hopefully this kind of addresses a little bit of the ecm why i went that way and uh hopefully we'll get some more information that's useful